בראשית נרא אלוהים את השמיים ואת הארץ. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. In six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. From the San Diego, California headquarters of the Institute for Creation Research, here are ICR scientists and Back to Genesis lecturers, Dr. John D. Morris and Ken Ham. Over the last few years, we've been enjoying some tremendous attendance at our, at our Back to Genesis seminars. But before the seminar begins on Friday evening, we have on Friday morning what we call a student assembly, where we invite students in to teach them about creation. These students come from Christian schools, from home schools, from public schools. Sometimes up to 5,000 students will be there. It's really great to be able to teach these eager minds about creation. Ken, you get to talk to the younger grades. I think you enjoy it more than the, than the kids do. Well, I certainly love to teach children, John. After all, I have uh, five of my own. And what I try to do is to be able to get them to see through the indoctrination they've received through their education system, the books that they've read, uh, the media, and so on, and to be able to ask, in particular, their teachers some very revealing questions. Like what? Well, say the teacher says, millions of years ago, I get the students to ask, Excuse me, sir, were you there? <laughs> I really like the catchphrase you use uh, about the fossils. How's it go? Hmm, billions of dead things buried in rock layers, laid down by water all over the earth. Hey, I did it. See if you can do it after you watch this program. This morning we're going to have an interesting time with an interesting topic. Before we do that, let me just get you used to the auditorium here and what we're going to be doing. Let me see you all put your hands up. That's fantastic. That doesn't mean you can fool around, by the way, because I have five children, so I know exactly what children are like. All right? And I used to be a high school teacher, too, so I know exactly what students are like. So we'll be watching you real carefully. Also, there are times I'm going to ask you to call out something, and so uh, to get you used to doing that, uh, why don't you say good morning to me? My name is Mr. Ham, so you all say good morning, Mr. Ham. That's pretty good. That's not bad. American sounding, but it's not too bad. Uh, I prefer it in an Australian accent, but who thinks I've got an accent? Dear, oh dear, when I'm in Australia and I ask that, nobody thinks I've got an accent. But over here, everyone thinks I've got an accent. Well, anyway. Okay, we ready? We're going to talk about a very important topic this morning. And as I said, there are times I'll ask you to put your hand up, times I'll ask you to call out. But we'll just see how we go. As soon as you know what I'm talking about, I want you to put your hand up. You ready? Listen very carefully. As soon as you know what I'm talking about, put your hand up. Parasaurolophus, Pachycephalosaurus, Struthium, Mimocyticosaurus, Tanistrophus, Allosaurus, Supersaurus, Seismosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus. What am I talking about? Can you all tell me? Ah, dinosaurs. You know, dinosaurs, well, they're an interesting topic. In fact, for some people, they're a real mystery. What happened to them? When did they live? How did they live? Where did they go? All that sort of thing. Well, we're going to talk about that particular topic in this session, the dinosaurs. What really happened to the dinosaurs? Let me put up a picture for you of one of my favorite dinosaurs. Who thinks that's a dinosaur? You think that's a dinosaur? No, I don't think it's a dinosaur either. In fact, uh, that's one of my favorite Australian animals. It's called a koala. Interesting animal, by the way. I know one of the best kept secrets in Australia is that in the wild, the smelly flea-bitten varmints will rip your eyeballs out. But uh, that's a secret because we know every American wants to cuddle a koala. Well, that's not a dinosaur. Let me see if, uh, is this one a dinosaur? Have a look at this one. What animal is that? Well, oh, it's a kangaroo. That's an intriguing animal too. It's a marsupial like the koala. Well, that's not a dinosaur. Let's see, is this one a dinosaur? You tell me if this one here is a dinosaur. That's not a dinosaur? That's uh, actually, it's an interesting animal. It's called a wombat. It's the one on the right there, you notice. I uh, just have to make sure you understand that for American audiences, but uh, wombat's an interesting animal, you know. You see, when I look at the Australian animals, do you know what I think of? I think of the God who created all the animals and plants in this world. There are many people today that believe in evolution. Put your hand up if you've heard of evolution. Heard of evolution? Who's heard of the idea that ape-like creatures evolved into people? That your ancestor was something like a monkey? Have you heard of that? Most of you seem to have heard of that. In fact, probably all of you. By the way, I don't think you evolved from a monkey. In fact, uh, let me get you to do something. Put your hands in the air and touch your fingers with your thumb like that. Can you do that? That's great. 
Now do the same with your big toe and little toes. Is there anyone here that can do that? I hope not. If you can, you shouldn't be here. You should be in a zoo or something like that. Because you see, when you look here at uh, an ape's hand and you look at a human hand and then you look at an ape's foot and a human foot, you notice something very different. You see, apes can do this with their feet, whereas we can't. We're very different to an ape. In fact, I don't believe we evolved from ape-like creatures. I believe that we are the result of God creating us. Have a look again at the wombat. You know why I believe the wombat, why I believe the wombat is a very intriguing animal? It has a pouch like the kangaroo, but its pouch doesn't face forward like the kangaroo, it faces backwards. You know why it faces backwards? Well, you see, the wombat tunnels under the ground. Can you imagine if the pouch faced forward, what would happen to the little wombats inside? They'd fill up with dirt and you'd get fossilized wombats real quick, wouldn't you? Can you imagine an animal here with its pouch at the back where the young jump in at the rear end? Isn't that intriguing? It really is. But you know what? It looks like somebody made the wombat. It looks like it's designed to do what it does do. And what it does do, it does do it very well, doesn't it? I think it does, don't you? Well, I really do. So I really like the wombat. But you know, the most confusing animal for the evolutionists, I think, that even exists in the world today is this one. Who can tell me what that is? The platypus, the duck-billed platypus. Do you know why I believe it's the most confusing for evolutionists? Well, you think about this. Evolutionists talk about one animal evolving from another over millions of years. Well, what are you going to do with a platypus? Because when you look at a platypus, it has a bill like a duck, it has a beaver-like tail, it has webbed feet like an otter, it has claws like a reptile, it has hair like a bear, it has, uh, lays eggs like a turtle, it feeds its young on milk like a mammal, it detects electrical impulses, it has spurs like a rooster, it has poison like a snake. I mean, if you're looking for a transitional form, it's just about everything, isn't it? So you see, the evolutionists get real confused with the platypus. What did it evolve from? Everything? <laughs> that doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? In fact, I believe every time an evolutionist looks at the platypus, I think God smiles because I think he made it just for them. That's uh, why it's my favorite animal. Well, you know, I believe God made the platypus. I believe he made the wombat. I believe he made all the different kinds of animals. And you know what else? I believe he made animals like this. What's that called? Triceratops. And that's one of the dinosaurs. In fact, it has three horns. It has an armor plate. It's 20 feet long. They believe it weighed about 10 tons. It's an interesting animal, the triceratops. Well, see if you can tell me the name of this one. Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus is an interesting one. You can see it has four spikes on the tail. It's 20 feet long. They believe it weighed about two tons. But interestingly enough, they think its brain was no bigger than a walnut. Can you imagine that? I'm sure your teachers think that of you sometimes, don't they? That uh, your brain was no bigger than a walnut. But near its hips, near its hips, it had... Uh, knobs on the spinal cord that were about 20 times the size of the brain. They're like little computer centers to drive the, the legs of the animals. Can you imagine that? Like a little brain and having computer centers that, that basically drive the legs. It's an intriguing animal, isn't it? Well, let me show you my favorite dinosaur. Who can tell me the name of that one? Tyrannosaurus. I'll tell you why he's my favorite dinosaur. He had such a big head and big teeth. His head was about five feet long. He had teeth about six inches long. In fact, there's a tooth of a Tyrannosaurus. Can you see that? Let me put it this way. Doesn't it look like one of your teacher's teeth? Do you think it, think it does? <laughs> hey? Actually, it's a tooth from a Tyrannosaurus, and he had many teeth like that, about six inches long, and his body was about 50 feet long. He was about 20 feet tall, and they believe he weighed about 10 tons. So he was an enormous animal. But the biggest animal of all, or the biggest dinosaur of all, they believe is the biggest, is this one. Who can tell me the name of that one? Brachiosaurus. And Brachiosaurus, they believe, weighed, wait for it, weighed 90 tons. He's about 80 feet long, about 20 feet high, but when he raised his head up, he was about 40 feet in the air. In other words, probably about as tall as a four-story building. Can you imagine a dinosaur that tall? Isn't that incredible dinosaur? Well, you know, a lot of people say, well, how do you know dinosaurs existed and when did they live and... and uh, what happened to them? How do we know that they look like that? In fact, we don't really know they looked exactly like this because we don't find live ones today. But how do we know dinosaurs existed? In fact, who can tell me here? How do we know dinosaurs existed? Can you tell me? Somebody said fossils. That's right. In fact, let me show you. Here's a fossil of a dinosaur. Fossils are the remains of animals or plants or their impressions that we find in the rocks around the earth. 
And here we have some bones of 